Connor. Give it to Connor, and then you play 51 up here. 就像都是可以赢球。那所以球一发出来的时候呢，立陶宛会。Debut the other night, you set a CEBL record nine threes. Let's talk about when you're feeling it like that. You know how easy the game comes to you. What's going through your mind when it's like you're just flames coming off the ball? Just like everything slows down, and as soon as you get that little bit of space, you know, like as soon as you feel it good, you just let it fly. So. You're just trying to get open, get as much room as you can, and then you know as soon as you're shooting it, you feel hot, so you feel like it's going in. You're really confident. So, the last round of the match is from the Chinese team. Eighty-two to eighty-two. 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 Eighty-two to e
that's really cool that's really cool yeah so it was a really cool experience now speaking of uh you, you obviously you were coached by terry and rita and i wanted to know what the impact of the rita program and you going to that was for you was that like one of the first times you got to travel yeah I think we might have done some state tournaments maybe with the Phoenix team in the summer before that, but never to the level that it was with Rita. And so that was a big exposure to just a lot of the players out there that I would have never even seen or heard of before. And it really pushed me to be better because I was just used to being playing golf with the people that I knew and just pushed me to a whole different ball game where now I'm not even close to like the best player that we're playing. So I need to really like start to step up my game even more too. Perfect. So yeah, really cool. And then I've never shot so much. Like with, after, leading up to that, my, I didn't. I didn't really have a jump shot. But <laughs> going there, I've actually been to play basketball every day, and then doing a bunch of drills that really helped my shot just improve there. So that helped just develop me further as a player, trying to trying to round out my game, and obviously that really helps prepare me for Carlton. Yeah. So I'm gonna ask a couple questions about Carlton because again. Um, I know why Dave Smart was so successful because I remember uh, we were at National Prep Invitational and we were playing and on the Friday night, Rob was there and mm -hmm. Dave's wife was having a baby and on the Saturday, I look up and Dave's there. I think she had the baby on the Friday night and you drove to Connecticut to recruit you. So I'm like, if people ask me, you know, what do you think is Carlton going to be good? I said, well, their head coach <laughs> just showed up the day after his wife had a son or it wasn't even a daughter or whatever, but and you're five years there. I believe you guys won five years in a row while you were there. What was yeah. the toughest championship to win? The toughest was probably either fourth or fifth year. The year that they left me out of sabbatical, we had Bill Leave and Tommy Leave, who were two of like, the best players almost, like, ever in the CIS. So everyone was kind of doubting our team. So we really had to advance together to try and overcome that. And the fifth year, Ryerson was pretty good. They always gave us a big challenge. And so. In the final game, we we were able to pull it out, but it was a it was a tough game. We all had to really battle. And I lost this check. You got one after this, but what did Smart say to you in your last game, walking off the court when you won a championship? Was there anything that he any any great moment, or was it just you know? The I same think game? that's the only. He actually like gave me a hug, which is like so weird after just being yelled at constantly because because he hugged. Great job, great career. It's, what's happening here? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> you were confused after Richard the play going, well, what, what's going on? Eh? <laughs> yeah, it was exhilarating. It was such a great feeling. Just walking off there and then comes into the changing room and just immediately starts just grabbing everybody. It was, it was really awesome to have that feeling. What a great career. Jake? Um, well, speaking of that year, I think that was your National Player of the Year um, season. And what, what kind of insights did you have coming out of that that uh, contributed to such a successful campaign? A lot of it was putting in extra work because obviously with Carlton, you obviously have a lot of work to begin with, but we always had a bunch of guys who were willing to work harder and push you to work better too. And so one of them was Greg, he would always come in with me and we got a lot of extra work in working on different moves that I'd use in games, where I'd be shooting the ball. And then obviously with Dave's individuals too, we'd work on just coming off screens, like plays that we do in the game working on that move and being able to shoot well and being able to attack off that and making the right reads off certain situations. And I think that really impacted, especially that year and my previous years, just my level of play just increased with that. I was going to say, uh, and I, I, I put this question out there before, but um, in the top, what was more exciting for you, winning the player of the year or graduating? I think graduating, I was actually talking with my dad not too long ago and it never really kind of, I didn't remember really kind of looked back at winning the player of the year. I with graduating. It was a big, like obviously a big deal after being there for five years, but I never really looked back at the player of the year. So I think maybe like later on, I'll appreciate the player of the year more, but I don't know when I graduated, that was just a great feeling. Just actually getting through school, being ready to just move on to a new chapter. is a very exciting part. And speaking of moving on, you moved on to actually becoming a professional basketball player. What was that like? And what were the biggest obstacles did you find for that? So that was a really cool experience. And then, so my first year with Niagara was cool because I got to work with Victor, who I played with before, and his dad. And then 
a bunch of other guys from our team went there too. So it was cool to play with them. I think the most difficult part is kind of finding your role in the new team because they're always bringing in new people and you're trying to really find your fit on the team to help them win. And so it's tough to try and figure that out in such a short time. With Carlton, you had so much time and so much preparation to get ready for each game and everything. So everyone kind of knew their spot and what they had to do for the game. So it's really kind of tough to figure that out when you're overseas, just trying to make that. And then also trying to make your impact because obviously you want to do well and have your team win and then also do well for yourself because it becomes your job. So you need to make sure that you're also performing at a high level constantly so that you can keep doing that as a living. I'd like to get Ben to ask his question now because sure. uh, it gives him, actually, it's a good segue. Connor just brought up team stuff uh, individually. And I think Ben has some questions on team success. And that must be really tough to integrate into pro ball. So Ben, go ahead. Yeah. So my question is, because the two things that I find most interesting are like figuring out the optimal way for individual success. We've talked a lot about that with like past participants on these Zooms, but what we don't go too deep into is insight into how to achieve success as a collective, because that's like the step above individual. You have individual success, but then how do you put it all together? So I wanted to ask you that question I didn't give you this in advance, so I apologize. I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> good, but I think it would be really interesting to gain your insight because, you know, you've been to the professional level, so that's a different dynamic than, like, mm -hmm. teams in school. And just, I'd like to, yeah, you just be free with however you want to answer that. Yeah, so with looking at the team, uh, team success, you really want to get the culture of everyone combining for one goal. Because if, if the team does well, then everyone – actually does well and they're like, everyone will get their next job like people will look at the guy who's doing well the guy who's working hard as like the center maybe in this kind of not scoring much points or guys who are just defending like crazy everyone who puts in the work to help their team win people look at that and go that guy knows how to win so that helps push everybody forward so when your group kind of buys in to the same ideals of looking at stop looking at getting stops and what are the best options for us to score on defense maybe or on offense sorry Maybe the best option isn't for one guy to shoot, it's to move it to the next guy. Maybe it's for the guy to pass it into the post or maybe it's to kick it out or have this guy use the ball screen. So it's trying to figure out where your best options are and agreeing all together that you want to win more than just your own individual success. Right. Okay, so I, I agree for sure. And then I would ask you is like, how do you get to that? Because, you know, you, you say that and, and everybody's probably going, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that makes sense. But then you get into that moment and then in the moment, in the game, things start to break down, like your own emotion, your own personal desires start to get in the way and it's going to start to drag you away from that goal. So I would ask you, like, how would you go about that? Is it from the leadership? Is it, you know? So we did at Carlton and what we tried and what I tried to do with a bunch of overseas teams, you get like a core group. So you get guys that you know are bought into winning. And then so when you have that group, and if someone tries to like break off and be selfish, you guys can all like, you, know, you, you can say like, hey, listen, we got to do this together. Like we need to do that. And then you have people behind you also. And then slowly everyone starts coming into that group, right? Because everyone who is not in that group just is being kind of excluded because you're like, you're being, you, you can't do that. Like We need you to do this. We need this to be done. Like we need you to rebound. We need you just, we need you to get here and stop this guy. So trying to look at that and trying to make guys be like, yes, like when it's your time, like, if you want to have time to go one on one, we can set that up. But we need to know that that's what you want to do, and then we have to like try and prepare to make sure everyone succeeds. So you have to join into our groups as well. Right, and and so then I would ask is, you know, do you have? I'm sure you have because I know I have, and you've been playing so much more and have so much more experience. So I'm sure you've run into this, is where there really becomes a lot of friction in that where that might be the goal and you're trying to get that done, but mm -hmm. it's not really, you know, so when I, when I say that, does it bring up a particular experience that you can remember or? I know I just had, I know I just had lots of long chats with guys, especially like after practice and just trying to figure out where their head's at, like what they feel like. Sometimes they feel like they don't get the ball enough. They're not getting enough shots. So I'm like, all right, well, let's try and work on that. So let's try and make sure that we can get you the ball in spots that you're good at. And then we'll try and make sure that you know that 
when you pass it, you, you will get it back. Like it's not like you'll pass it and lose it. So we try and just figure out a way so that you can get them what they need and also get them to be on your side. To like, we need you to do this to win also. Like, right. We can't have you taking this many shots or we can't have you not rebounding. We, for, for us to win and for you to succeed and us as a team, we need you to do this. So they're just trying to figure out where that line is, where they have what they need and you get what you need for your team as well. Right. And I think- Excellent. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. Uh, um, <laughs> that was on the uh, roll. Terry. That was ready. <laughs> yeah, well, we can send it back to Terry, uh, to Ben, after you ask what you were going to ask, because I know you have a couple of questions that are mainstays, and I'm interested in Connor's answer. Yeah, sure. So, Connor, uh, we're just going to rate the high school on down. Uh, toughest matchups. Who are your toughest matchups? And if you can remember playing in District 10, let's try to put it there. If not, you know, who's your who are your toughest matchups? District 10, my first year was definitely uh, St. James. They had uh, Ryan Higgins and some other guys, and they were all a year older. This was my grade nine year. And so we played against them. It was actually, they beat us twice during the regular season, so they were actually a really tough competition. Ryan was pretty athletic, and they had some guys who could really shoot it. And so our team really had to come together to try and beat them. And then in grade, in my grade 10 year, we played against Ross, who had a bunch of guys who played on my rep team. And so their team, they always managed to get me in foul trouble, which always hurt me. And so our team really struggled. Our, a lot of our other guys had to step up and play. We played against them, but they had a lot of skilled guys. So that was a tough matchup as well. Yeah. So I, I'm going to change the question, right? Because I, I always ask the same one about the officials. I'll leave officials alone this week. Um, <laughs> so, you know, you had your, your dad as your, basically your first coach, me your second, and then your as far as your third. Is there one thing from each guy you would take? Because, the way you talk and communicate sooner or later when you have children, you're going to be a coach. Is there something from each guy you can take that you can think of? Uh, yeah, it's different to see kind of everyone's insight on it. I just love the way that I got pushed each time. So obviously my dad's pushing me to be better. Always wants me to be better. You like everyone just taking me out of my comfort zone. You actually taking me out of where I'm comfortable in Guelph, bringing me to a whole new city, playing against guys from in the States and a bunch of other guys in Canada. So always, and today, bringing me out of my comfort zone, making me try and be more vocal during games, trying to make me work harder on defense, rebound more, improve my shot, do a bunch of stuff that I was just not used to doing before. So I think that's a big thing that I'll try and bring in if I ever look at coaching or if I try and help anybody who's trying to push them outside of where they're comfortable so that you can really find where your boundaries are and really test how far you can climb. Perfect. And I, I, Pacheco probably asked this one too, but um, I want to know, for young kids, the shake true hoopers coming up, the ball for all kids, you know, three, three or four things that to be a player like yourself, that's been at the top level, like, you know, even just maybe the a top high school level, you know, what do you do to get there? Like what, what, what can they do to get to that level? Yeah. So a lot of stuff that I learned with shake is just not to be trapped in one role. Like a lot of guys get trapped in being a big man or being a point guard Whereas when you get to Shaker's camp, it was always, everyone's doing ball handling. Everyone's doing some post. Like, you're always working on different stuff. I remember one time I was just shooting on the side court and Shake came over and told me, he's like, just try a random shot. Start doing everything off the glass. Like, start mixing it up. Like, really testing it. Just really just trying to figure out different ways of shooting, different ways of scoring. And, uh, yeah, so I felt that was pretty big. And so, obviously, just getting on the court and having fun when you're young is a big deal, too. Um. I have another question because you brought something up. This will help kids. Um, you brought something up about the surprise you had when you had won and finally your coach was not screaming at you, but <laughs> congratulating you and celebrating as well. And, and you were like, after five years of this. So I, I'd like for young guys to get the insights um, into what an actual struggle it is and how you're not always going to have ups, but often what seems to be nothing but downs for extended periods that you have to overcome through, well, you tell us the means. Yeah. So even like when I first got there, uh, we were just doing camps to try and get, so everyone's making money with these camps. And so we're working out on the Carlton camp. And so you're standing up, for that whole day and that's like nine to five then you get it then you have a little break to get some food then you come in to do an individual for an hour then you have your two hour scrimmage 
and then you have lift after. So for the first week, my legs were absolutely dead. I've never done that much work. <laughs> like that, that's straight, standing all day, have your little break, go to scrimmage, go to weights, go play individual. It's just a lot. So that was just a huge awakening for me. And then once you start getting in shape, they even push you a little further. Like I know in my second year when they were trying to get me to start improving as a player and start being ready to kind of help the team later, they started putting me on Phil and Tommy every practice. And if I didn't make them mad, I had to run two suicides after every, every drill. And so I just had to make them, I had to make them mad. Like I didn't have to play well. And I just had to get in there and make them mad, like find ways to upset them. That was the only way I could avoid running two suicides after every drill. Wow. I'm stealing yeah. all this stuff. I'm taking all of it. <laughs> Watch out Ridley College. Yeah, go look out. It was, it was good, though, because it does really, it pushes you to be more competitive. And it really pushes you to really challenge the, the best players over there. So it really pushed me to really try and up my level and then make sure that I was pushing them as well. When you were in Guelph when you were a kid and when you were coming back in the summer and doing the uh, homework hoops and all those other things when you were star, you know, starting at Carlton, did you ever have a walking down the street, hey, that's Connor Wood, can I sign an autograph kind of moment? Or Because I, uh, I know you guys were on TV quite a bit, right? Yeah, I don't, I don't really have like a sign moment, but I would have, I would have some guy come up to me and be like, hey, Connor, let's go, like, blah, blah, start talking to me. I'm like, I don't know how you know me, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no one's ever bought you a, bar, a beer in the bar and said, hey, great job. Oh, I know I have another that, question, a Carlton question, too. Um, I heard that you guys weren't allowed to go out. Is that true or is that a, a myth? That's a myth. Is it? Okay. <laughs> yeah. There were there were times where Dave would purposely talk longer after the game so that we didn't have enough time, but <laughs> we were allowed to go. Out. There would be times where he'd talk and then he'd be going off about something we did wrong that game, and it'd be getting close. It'd be, it'd be like an hour, two hour talk. Be like I I extended it extra long just so you guys can't go out tonight. Go home. <laughs> hey, well the proof is in the pudding, right? The proof is in yeah. the pudding, so for sure. Yeah. And and I guess my other question is, I know this happened when you played for me. Um, the year I had you play point guard, did that help you at all or did that hurt you? What do you think? I think it definitely helped me. I mean, I feel like I always could have done better with my ball handling, but I feel like playing the point guard position always helps you with your court vision. And so just kind of understanding the different roles and where the openings are, you try and find that spot as a shooter or even know that if you attack, you can actually make the kick out to that spot as well. So I think that, that really helped me to get that experience. And I liked having that experience as well. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, I think um, it certainly helped you in other aspects too. I mean, at the pro level, I'm sure you had to have more handle and vision than you expected. And uh, I think it's fantastic that the four of us here were involved with, with the Nighthawks and got a chance to uh, go from every aspect. And certainly Ben is uh, one of the kids that grew up watching you play. And basically, I'm sure there are several other hundreds of kids in Guelph that actually would recognize you and would love to follow your career. Certainly, you're already in the Guelph Sports Hall of Fame. So you got to be pretty pleased with that. Leading to Ben, I'd like you to ask your last question there. Um. I actually as a fan I didn't have the last question but I would like to ask this since we're going off of um, you know being a figure in the community being somebody who kids can look up to and see that a guy that has come from this community being wealth and has gotten to the levels that you've gotten to you know as you approach older and older age and as your body starts to stray away from being a professional basketball player, you know, do you feel like your goal and your focus from trying to be the best basketball player is going to transition to something else? And if you have thought about that, what is that for you? So I have definitely thought about that. And I think it's mostly just trying to give back. Like I know, especially when I was at Shakers, I was always put it at the end of the, at the end of the workouts, we always have a bunch of the older guys come. We all play some kind of three on three or four and four with a bunch of the older guys. And so that was always a really cool feeling, especially as a young kid playing against these guys who are just so 
skilled compared to you at that time. And so it really gives you a little show of what to kind of expect for where you need to work to. Because usually these guys are coming after they're done. So you're like, these guys must have been even better in their prime. So it's really cool to get that experience. So I'd like to kind of do that. And also just get to kind of give what I kind of learned just going through. Like I learned a lot of just like reading screens, like trying to figure out the actual details of the game, which I really didn't understand when I was younger. And so I think that would also be really helpful just to get them to kind of know and get a little influence in with that so they can use that to their advantage as well. So we'll make sure to book you some time through Ben to come to camp and, and give back to that kind of situation for us. Yeah. Um, hopefully, hopefully when stuff opens up and yeah. even perhaps, uh, you know, if we could maybe get you to write down some tips, we could put them on Instagram, anything to kind of, reach out to the kids who are having a tough time right now because they can't really play anymore yeah that's true yeah so i think it will, i think it will maybe get better when summer opens up maybe you can actually go to like a hoop outside or something but yeah we'll have to see once all this starts to cool down a little bit COVID's yeah no, COVID's no fun for anybody it's uh it's uh it's terrible but uh you gotta find your way to continue and, and keep going and and, you know, and make sure it's a positive uh, environment and everything like that. And I have one last question, Shake, and then you can I guess, close it up. But in a tough situation when you're playing, didn't matter what age, who'd you go to after the game, your mom or your dad? Hmm. Tough situation. I know after I lost in uh, – when I was with the Team Ontario, we lost to Quebec. I actually went to my grandpa because he was there. Okay. I actually went to him and we hugged and I got a little teary-eyed, but – both of my parents have always been super supportive, so I love going to either of them. Like I, they're probably both there anyway, so it's usually a group thing if anything goes wrong. <laughs> and your dad has the good cigars, so maybe when you win, you get one of those. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> when you win, you get a good little celebration going. Yeah. Jake? Yeah, well, to f I guess to finalize this session, I'd love for you to actually give us um, three of your top moments in basketball for yourself and they don't actually have to be like you know winning a championship maybe just being exhausted at the end of a game that you lost can um be really exhilarating or perhaps funny moments okay uh so i know one of the ones is actually the first year we won so i didn't really get to play that game but we were up by we won i think by 50 points and so at the end, everyone's in, and I'm expecting just to go up and high-five everyone, no one to be too excited. And so I turn as the buzzer goes to see everyone on the bench jump up and start storming into the middle. And so just that rush that they gave me, it was really, really cool because that was my first time actually winning. And so seeing them just get that excited for all of us to win was, was really cool. And so we tried to do that every time. And that thrill was just never, never, never been beaten. Just getting that final championship was always really, really fun. Um, another top moment would be probably again in my first year. I uh, Tyson was just everyone had to double him because he was so good in the post, and so he kept kicking it out. And I just had wide open threes, and I just kept hitting them. And so I felt really good coming out of that game, just being like, I just got like nine threes that game just because they had to double Tyson. <laughs> nice, nice. So that was super fun. And then my third year was interesting. Because that was the year where I was trying to transition towards being one of the, the main impact players on that team. And so going through that and actually after the final game, finally winning, I was just so tired. And then I remember our Tommy and Phil were just exhausted as well. And so we we're kind of just sitting there after after winning. And we we're just sitting there slowly drinking the beer. Just be like, whew, it's done. We made it. You got through, eh? You finally yeah. got through, eh? We, beat, we made it through the season put a lot of work in it was it's just nice to have that final chance to let's rest for a week before we're back in the gym well those are all right. those are all very transferable skills to life right you know hard yeah. work grinding focus you know giving of yourself to others and uh you know those are great things that uh you know that obviously you've gone through and mitch has gone through and you know it's been really great for the wood family and you know your mom and dad and even your brother and sister seeing all these different things and I remember, I remember I was in Ottawa and we were with Rita, we were playing, you were at Carlton in your first year. And uh, 
Uh, we were playing up there, and someone's like, you know, what are you doing? I'm just going to watch a current game. You know, a former player, Mike Connor Wood, plays there. And the woman's like, I was in the bar with a bartender, and she's like, he must be really, really good. I go, why? He goes, he plays. He goes, rookies never play. <laughs> Those rookies never play. He gets on the floor. What's going on? What's going on? And yeah. not so much impact in the community Carlton had because they knew your name. And this was like a random bartender. And they knew you played. And I just sitting there, my friend Sue, and, I, and Sue's like, why is this so important for you, Terry? I go, you just don't understand, Sue. I go, you just don't understand the impact. But, you know, I take my hat off to you and your career. And uh, I think you've done great things with it and continue. And if you do play some pro and, you know, for sure we'll support you. And if you're going the other route, I know you're going to be successful. And, you know, I'll let, again, let Shake close it off. And thanks for coming back on uh, to the uh, Ball for All Shake True Hoop uh, Zoom chat. Yeah, thank you both yeah. for you guys for so. Well, um, I'm hoping that uh, you'll be willing to grace us with your presence and we'll make sure that Ben reaches out to you and gets you some stuff uh, through our contacts or Instagram. And thanks again for coming out. Congratulations on a stellar career. And uh, I'm hoping I can get a chance to hit some hook shots over you at some point <laughs> in the near future. I remember that famous hook shot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm trying to dust it off, and we'll see if it comes back. Yeah, thanks very good. much. No, thank you. Thanks, guys. Right. Have a great Sunday. NCAA, here we come. NCAA, there we go. Yeah.